Hello, uh, I'm Hyungjun Kim, the corresponding author of this paper from Konyang University Hospital in Daejeon, Korea. I would like to acknowledge Hedo Jung from Inja Peck Hospital, who contributed as the first author. It is an honor and privilege to share this work titled Korean Society of Endourologists and Robotics, shortened as KSIR, Recommendations on Diagnosis, Treatment, and Prevention of Urethiasis. This project was a collaborative effort involving the Publication and Research Committee of KSIR. Express my sincere gratitude to all the co-authors for their dedicated contributions to this work. In Korea, the annual incidence of urinary stone has been consistently rising over the past few decades. With a recurrence rate of around 20% within five years, the importance of both treatment and prevention cannot be overstated. Notably, social factors, including the diet and physical activity, influence the stone composition based on factors such as gender, age, geographic region, and seasonal variation. Furthermore, technological advancements have significantly impacted the treatment approaches for urinary stones, and there has been a transition towards flexible and disposable scopes, as well as the development of novel lasers with advanced features. Additionally, improvements in digital image quality, instrument miniaturization, and the integration of the robotics in the urology have revolutionized the field and greatly influenced the treatment patterns for urinary stones. These changes have had a profound impact on the diagnosis, treatment, and the prevention of urethiasis. Recognize the need to uh, address common questions that clinicians encounter in their practice, we collected these queries and aim to provide evidence-based answers by incorporating the latest updates in the field. Our goal was to equip healthcare professionals with up-to-date information to enhance their management of the urinary stone cases. To address the need for comprehensive recommendations on urinary stones, the KSIR project team was established. We initiated the process by conducting an email survey among KSIR members to gather uh, commonly inquired, uh, encountered questions and concerns in the management of the stone patients. Through the survey, we collected 150 questions, which were then analyzed and consolidated into 20 core questions by grouping similar inquiries together. Each key question was assigned to authors based on their special expertise, and they were requested to provide answers in the form of FAQs. The 20 core questions were organized into four parts following a conceptual frame shown in this figure. Similar to the emptying in the storage phase of the voiding, uh, the stone-related events uh, throughout a person's lifetime were categorized into two main phases, uh, the active treatment phase and the silent phase. The active treatment phase was further divided into typical situations, special situations, and peritreatment management period. The silent phase refers to a period when the stone is asymptomatic and does not cause any immediate issues. Part 1 of the recommendations focuses on the peritreatment period and includes a seven core questions. The first question explores the role, of, uh, role and the indication of contrast enhanced imaging when playing the treatment. The second question addresses the indication of a renal function assessment prior to the treatment. Uh, and question three delves into the management strategy for stone-induced renal colic. And four discusses the indication and duration of the prophylactic antibiotics. Question five explores the indication for pre-stenting, its duration, and potential complications. And six further uh, expands on the pre-stenting. Uh, specifically addressing the strategies to mitigate uh, discomfort during the period when the stent is placed. The final question in part one pertains to follow-up strategies for the residual fragments. 
Part 2 of the recommendation focuses on the active treatment of the urinary stones in typical scenarios and consists of nine key questions. The treatment options are organized from uh, least invasive to most invasive approaches. Uh, the first question pertains to selection of agents for medical expulsive therapy and whether it is appropriate to switch to more aggressive treatment options. The next two questions resolve around the SWL and these questions address predictors of stone-free outcomes, technical tips to achieve a stone-free status during SWL, and uh, recommendations for follow-up procedures afterward. Question 4 and 5 specifically focuses on the technique of the RARS and it discusses the strategies to improve the stone-free rate and minimize complications associated with the procedure. Uh, question 6 and 7 focuses on the uh, PCNL. These questions explore PCNL indications and various approaches and methods used to access the kidney during the PCNL and ways to minimize complications associated with the procedure. Question 8 provides insights into when the ESERS, endoscopic combined intraoral surgery, is appropriate choice for treating the stones. Lastly, uh, the question 9 focuses on the advantages of pure or robotic laparoscopic surgeries for urinary stones. Part 3 of the recommendation focuses on the active treatment of the special situations related to stones. Uh, it consists of eight key questions, which can be categorized into two groups based on the causative factors, patient factors, and the stone factors. Regarding the patient factors, uh, the first question addresses the management of the stones in the patients who are undergo, under the use of uh, anticoagulants or antiplatelet agents. And question two focuses on the treatment of urinary stones in patients who are pregnant. And third question pertains to a management of the stones in the patients with um, altered urinary uh, system anatomy due to the previous surgeries. Question four explores the uh, management of the urinary stones in the pediatric populations. Regarding the stone factors, question five deals with the treatment of uh, diverticular stones. Uh, question six on the impacted stones. And question seven focuses on the uh, strain straws after the shock wave. And final questions is in the patients who uh, has a stone in the presence of infection. Part four of the recommendation addresses the management of the silent stones, uh, specifically focusing on the follow strategy after active stone treatment. Additionally, it provides recommendations on dietary modifications and indications for metabolic evaluations. The recommendation further lists uh, available agents in Korea based on the stone composition and metabolic evaluation. The effect and the potential side effects of each agent are summarized in table in summary, the treatment approach for urinary stone is influenced by multiple factors, uh, the healthcare facilities, environment, and available equipment are also important considerations when selecting an appropriate treatment method. The urinary tract stone uh, treatment recommendation developed by the CASER project team is intended to provide valuable assistance in making appropriate uh, decisions in various clinical scenarios. If you have any other further inquiries or require additional information, uh, please do not hesitate to reach out. Thank you once again.